Hello everybody, my name is Prophet and welcome back to more Planet Zoo in the Kanga Zoo. Ha, <laughs> looking great. We got little kangaroos running all over the place. This is amazing. We're also just raking in the dough at this point. Oh god, that's exactly one of the things I did not want to see happen. No, 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 no. You know what? Before you get a little inbreeding, congrats, you get released into the wild, like now. Oh, he looks so disappointed. <laughs> He's like, wait, wait, what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> Sorry, what was I saying? Oh, right, we're rolling in the dough at this point. <laughs> um, that's one of the things about this game is I do find that as long as you're willing to be patient and really make sure you invest in each individual habitat and you don't overextend yourself, uh, the business aspect of the game is usually not that hard. It's not particularly difficult. We seem to be doing just fine and dandy, don't we? Yeah. My gosh, that was so unbelievably funny. Okay, so some vet research is done on more things. We're just going to continue working on some of these little exhibits, though it looks like we are finishing up on at least a few of them. In fact, it looks like the, um, looks the Titan Beetle and the Burrowing Cockroach are all that remain. Very well, we shall also make sure that we uh, are really on top of MRSA, since we know that apparently kangaroos can be infected by that. Now, what do we want to do today? Well, I did say that I want to set up a saltwater crocodile exhibit. Now, of course, that requires that there are actually some saltwater crocodiles to be had, which there is indeed one. Okay, I, I, that'll work, I guess. Let's take a quick look-see. You are of least concern. Your natural hab habitat actually does include Australia, so that counts. Uh, only one to two. Generally not a lot of crocodiles desired, and you probably don't need that much space either. This honestly could be a pretty small exhibit. The question is if I want it to be a very small exhibit or not. Um, I wouldn't mind it though. What if I set up like a little overhead path over here and then just like a very simple little exhibit down over here for some saltwater crocodiles? You walk upstairs a little bit and you can see into the entire pen. Does that sound pretty good? I think that sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and build exactly that. Here we go. Something like this should be just fine. Of course, we do need to get our standard gate right along over there. All right, before the crocodile disappears, as it seems to do on occasion, let's go ahead and grab one of those. I do believe, and I could be wrong on this, so I hope I'm not wrong, but I do believe that um, part of the market, at least some of the animal market, is actually uh, related to what's actually happening online as far as like how they're tracking other players and what animals they're selling off and so on. That might be a total lie, but I think it's correct. So sometimes you just have to wait for other players to actually go ahead and sell some animals and stuff. In theory, right? Maybe. Alrighty, so we have a crocodile on the way. I can just about guarantee you that... Uh, they are going to wish they had a lot of water, and we will, of course, set that down. There's some more research for that Titan Beetle. Um, you know what? Let's go ahead and cancel the Titan Beetle for a moment, and actually, until we place down the crocodile, we can't start researching it. I wish you could start preemptively researching some of these animals and stuff, you know? I think that would be highly appropriate. I want to know as much as I can before I import an animal into my zoo, right? Poor hapless creature. It's like it has to go through a trial period of suffering. Well, anyway, there it is. Hello, Bagus. Bagus? Oh, that's a great name. Look at all the confetti. He's so confused. It's like, what the crud is going on? Why is there grass everywhere? Where's the water? It's a very good question there, Bagus. All right, we'll come back to research on you in a little bit. So first things first, terrain-wise, yeah, you're not thrilled. Not a lot of navigable swimming areas, are there? No. Well... Let's see. We're going to start with the terrain here, I think, and let's go ahead and start sculpting some things down. Now, as far as uh, pushing down probably with a good amount of intensity in a pretty large area, larger than that, I would think, we'll go ahead and start drastically reducing this area here. The question to me is, do I leave some space on the edges just in case? Maybe not, um, because I don't know if they can, like, poop over here. We need to have access for our keepers to walk around, but I'm really hoping not. So we'll just go ahead and do something kind of like this. want it to be somewhat asymmetrical, though, just to be of interest. And we'll do probably a little bit more off in the corner, kind of like so. This should be fine. We'll bring it down like this, and so on. Okay, so I feel like this ought to be pretty good, right? And then if we go to water... Uh, we want to set down, well, calm water or rough water? I'm assuming we want calm water. So we'll go ahead and set a water level right about there. 
And how does that feel for you? It's still calculating and it decides that's actually plenty of water. Good. Good, good, I'm glad to hear it. Okay, now let's set down a bit of rock. Uh, let's say we'll set some down off in this direction in these corners, because I don't expect there to be much growing over here if we have anything to say about it, so that's pretty good. Uh, we are going to need a bit more soil, and I can certainly arrange some of that, kind of like so. De dupe and a little bit more like this de dupe. We don't need this much long grass at all. Maybe a little bit more short grass instead. How's that sound? Pretty reasonable. Okay, so this is going to be our crocodile pen. Oh no, and a kangaroo died of old age. Well, that just makes me sad. All right, for environment, what do you need? Now, interestingly enough, it looks like crocodiles do not require any sort of a hard shelter. They just want to sleep in the water, which is fine. That's actually great. I appreciate it. So as far as plants are concerned, aquatic and tropical is what you are looking for. Uh, yeah, I'd be happy to accommodate for that. Let's go to Oceana and go to biome for aquatic and tropical. Uh, let's see. Let's actually start with just the aquatic. We can place down some nice, beautiful mangroves. Now, I wish that some of these trees didn't follow the curve of the uh, terrain quite as aggressively as they do, but that's fine. We can make something like this happen right along over here, and then we can have a bunch of reeds. Good lord, we know that crocodiles like having lots of reeds, right? That makes them feel real good about themselves or something? Yeah, do something like this. Maybe some over here as well. There we go. A couple little mangroves. Perfect. Uh, yeah, let me just go ahead and set up a bit more of this, and let's see if we can beautify this uh, environment. There we go. Something like this will probably do. But again, with like the plants being all kind of angled in a weird way, because that's just how the surface works, it's just kind of like, eh. Not exactly a fan of that, but all right. Release the southern castle where you have 1,300 grabs and no crime. No crime! I can't control no crime. All right, so that does seem to be a fully functional uh, habitat for our saltwater crocodile. The only thing left then is to make sure that we get some enrichment going. Actually, way too many plants. Oh, um, I'll be honest. I don't think I have ever had that problem before. So we're just going to go ahead and relieve some of the excess... Uh, reeds and stuff that I placed around the edge that don't really serve any particular purpose aside from trying to look good. But since the crocodile clearly does not appreciate my efforts, well then we're just gonna have to live with that, won't we? There we go. Now we're sort of in the green. You know, I just don't think that this crocodile really appreciates art. Not that I'm exactly artistic in how I do this, it's just I try to make things look nice and he just, he just spits in me. Spits in my face. All right, here we go. So now he's in the water, so he's just going to get around and have a lot of fun. Oh, he looks so excited, doesn't he? Well, that's pretty cool. Um, now we need to make sure we set down some sort of place for him to eat, of course, and any other facilities we can get. And then, yeah, we will have to uh, try to research some upgrades for our crocodile when the opportunity arises. Oh, and of course he likes blood sense. Yeah, that makes sense. An animal died. Oh, gosh, another one of my kangaroos. They're all getting old and plopping over dead. <laughs> oh, boy. Pretty soon we are going to have some inbreeding issues, and I'm just going to have to get rid of the male and just pick up a whole new one. That's probably the easiest way to do things, right? Yeah, probably. You know something I haven't touched this entire time, and it probably would be worth doing, is actually sending some of our workers off for training and try to get them to a higher level. Not all at once, I still need to make sure that we have enough folks around to actually manage things here back at home, but at least having a few of you guys getting trained up would be nice. We'll do the same here with vets and stuff like that. So it's going to cost me a little bit of extra money, and surely they are going to ask for higher salaries, but I think it's worth it. I'm also going to go ahead and start placing down some more shops, just because it looks like it's getting a little overcrowded in these areas, and I like to try and disperse people around a little bit more. Free me up for some more exhibits and stuff, right? What kind of food did I end up getting? Well, let's see, we have hats. That's a new thing. Hot dog squad! A hot dog squad? That sounds amazing! Let's see if I can place it in here. Why is it... Well, that's weird. Usually these pre-built buildings are actually pretty good and effective, but it looks like for some reason these don't actually line up with where they're supposed to. Oh, that is highly unfortunate. So as cool as this thing looks, it's not actually going to work. Ah, boo. Ooh, we did finally get one of our southern cassowaries to mature. Uh, it still looks like a chick to me, but the icon says it's an adult now. When are you going to transform for me? Any second now? Because you still look like a little chicky chick. I know you're supposed to be an adult. I know you're supposed to be. It said you're supposed to be. 
Hello! And now they're fighting each other because of overcrowding and stuff. Because the little chick hasn't actually grown up. Oi! That doesn't seem appropriate. And Rihanna, stop being so mean! Oh, good. We finally get some more research on the southern crocodile. Cool. What have we learned about you? What do you like? You like anything good? Well, you like prey-scented sacks. <laughs> okay, it's just a bag that smells like food. It doesn't. You don't get anything out of it. It just feels right. No food enrichments, unfortunately, but we can at least give you some more habitat enrichments. And also, apparently, you like balls and sprinklers and rubbing pads. Well, that's kind of nice. I mean, we do have one of those things. Um, rubbing pads? Sure. Let's set something up over this way, and then we'll have a prey-scented snack up over, I don't know, right along over there. That seems pretty good. And how about a big honking sprinkler in case you want to cool down? Right over here. Nice. Oh no! My last Titan Beetle died! Boo. Okay, we're gonna have to find ourselves some more. That's fine. <laughs> I went from having more Titan Beetles than I had a clue what to do with to all of a sudden having none. <laughs> These guys just have like a really short lifespan or something? That sucks. Ooh, I just noticed that the uh, koalas apparently aren't particularly thrilled. They don't feel like they have enough space anymore, huh? Uh, is the issue that some of you guys grew up or something? No, it's only two of you. You guys should be fine. What's the problem? Infertile. Benjamin is an infertile little koala? Oh, That's actually somewhat tragic. Um, now, fun thing about koalas is they actually can coexist with other Australian species. If I wanted to move these guys, for example, over to the kangaroo exhibit, they would be more than happy to oblige. But yeah, um, I think we rehome you somewhere else. And, uh, you know, I'm okay with spending a little bit of money to just kind of get rid of you for the time being. So, how is Audrey feeling? Still doesn't feel like there's enough space, and mainly because she's feeling very crowded more than anything else. So, basically, she sees too many people, and it's starting to freak her out a little bit. Well, that is one good reason for why, if we go to our mechanic research, maybe we want to research new barriers, right? Find that one-way glass so that they feel a little bit more isolated and maybe things would be better for them. There is, by the way, one more little exhibit that I still haven't placed down that does contain an Australian creature I found out. We can place you right along over here somewhere. Uh, that looks pretty good to me. We are missing the Eastern Brown Snake, I think is what it's called. That is the only other creature that is based in Oceania, which I believe does include Australia, if we can find the darn thing. Uh, Eastern Brown Snake, that's the one right there. Zoopedia, where are you from? Aha, Australia. See, what did I tell you? So this is the last one. The last creature we can possibly add that is exclusively for Australia, or exclusively of the region of Oceania, but includes Australia. Everything else that we adopt from here on out, unfortunately, is going to need to be of some other random place in the world, which is not a really bad thing, per se. It's just, you know, it's kind of cool to stick to a theme as long as we could, right? Uh, I think so. All right, as far as layout and stuff, nothing we can do at the moment. Let's go ahead and reduce that temperature a bit, increase that humidity, because apparently this is a uh, more tropical snake of some sort. And actually, that was pretty darn close to perfect right there. Not bad. All right, there we go. Oh, we finally can have some food enrichment for my crocodile, and apparently they like frozen blood pumpkins. Frozen blood pumpkins? Gross. Okay. Now, one thing we have to worry about that we haven't touched so far is uh, keeping water clean. And this is one good reason why you probably don't want to be placing down a lot of aquatic creatures too early on. But usually, you need to have some sort of a water treatment facility. You can see this ought to be a nice dark blue, but it's turning a little bit light blue. And that means it's starting to get dirtied up. So we need to place down a little water cleaner somewhere over here. And uh, understandably, the guests aren't exactly thrilled about this. It's considered to be at least a little bit of an eyesore, but if this does get taken care of, I think it's well worth this. So why is it green? I assume green means that it is taken... No, there we go. Now it's blue. Okay, there we go. Perfect. All right. So now we have some good clean water so our animals don't get sick and our guests don't think that it is horribly, horribly filthy. If you are going to have a lot of aquatic creatures, it's usually worth building a lot of those ponds all in one kind of big radius covered by the same water treatment plants. And you can see they do extend a pretty long range. 
So just plan appropriately and you can minimize just how many of these you're going to end up needing. Although, it also occurs to me that technically we kind of needed one over here as well. Oops. Ooh, I just got a fine for an injured animal? Why did no one tell me there was an injured animal? What's wrong, Joe Papal? All right, well, apparently that just cost me a little chunk of money. We're actually starting to bleed a little bit all of a sudden. Can't decide how much that's because I just keep placing down more nature and I spend all my money that way. That's entirely possible. What is going on with these dingoes? The dingoes seem to be doing just fine. There's just a whole load of them. Okay, and there goes our other... Titan Beetle, uh-huh. I don't really want to, like, breed you guys, but it feels like I constantly am gonna run out of you. I suppose one thing we could do that we haven't been doing is actually start doing some marketing for the zoo. That could be kind of fun. Poster campaigns, cereal box adverts and stuff, newspaper adverts, yeah, all this sounds pretty good. What about family hour? There we go, let's go ahead and begin a marketing campaign for about a year. That should be nice. Not that we're having any issues with our profit margins, we're actually fine, but it would be nice to start seeing the streets kind of get filled out again, you know? That way I can start building out some more exhibits. Speaking of extra exhibits, I think we should go ahead and start planning some. What would we like to bring in? That's a good question. Uh, we could get some hyenas. Aardvarks, those are kind of fun. Tapirs! Tapirs are a very bizarre creature. I don't think these guys originate down in Australia or anything. They're from Central America, but I mean, yeah, it kind of works. They do tend to like hotter temperatures. We could probably make something like these guys work, and they're kind of weird, right? They do prefer to have only small groups of one male and one female, though, so a very large exhibit is unnecessary in this case. Uh, yeah, I think that this is a perfectly fine idea. Let's go ahead and set up some tapirs. Although, admittedly, it's a little hard to see what the heck is going on with the rain being what it is right now. But there we go. Nice little pen right along over here. We'll add in some windows in a little bit. First things first, let's go to the market and get ourselves some tapirs. Bairds tapirs, specifically. You'll do fine, and we'll just go ahead and pick you up as well. Perfect. What wonderful names, by the way. Uhuatsi and It's Papalatl. Or however the heck you're supposed to say it. I'm not sure. There we go, okay, we got ourselves some Tabirs. Now these guys apparently also do like to have a fair bit of water, so I like that. It means I get to mess with the terrain a little bit. So first things first, we'll add in a little bit of hills along this way, and then we're gonna go ahead and drop things down a fair bit right along here. Now this might be a little bit too high intensity, so we'll go ahead and pull back a little bit. There we go. Okay, nice. Yeah, let's give him a fair bit of room for some swimming. Now, unfortunately, I think we are placing this again kind of farther away from our um, water treatment plant than we're supposed to. So this might actually be slightly messed up. But it's all right. I got plenty of money. We'll be able to take care of it, right? I think so. There we go, and they do seem to prefer mostly soil and simple short grass. One shelter appears to be more than enough for you. No enrichment at the moment, but that's okay. What else do you need? Let's see. Plenty of plants, and you're from South or Central America, which means we need tropical grassland and temperate plants. Okay. Also, apparently I accidentally have a sentry plant inside the exhibit. I'm not really sure how that happened, because they're all outside the exhibit, but okay, if you say so. There we go, something like this should be at least passable for the Tapir. So let's take a quick look-see. Are you happy for the most part, but you're really lacking in your enrichment? Which is not a whole lot that I can do with that at the moment. Though I am curious if it does tell me what other kind of creatures you can live with. The giant anteater can fit inside this biome pretty nicely. Also, the Colombian white-faced capuchin monkey. Eh, I don't feel like I want to deal with any of them right now, though. So you're just going to live on your own. Let's see. That's all looking pretty good. Oh, gosh. We got some more inbreeding. That looks like a very young one, if you don't mind me saying. Um, you know something? I think it might be time to go ahead and release... This is a male. Wow, I don't know where you came from. Time to go ahead and release you into the wild. Go on. Get on and get. All right. There we go. And let's go ahead and place down a couple more small animal exhibits. Nothing too crazy. How about... A simple yellow anaconda. You seem like fun. We'll go ahead and place you in there. 
and maybe also do, 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 the Mexican red knee tarantula. Yes, people like spiders, right? That's always a crowd pleaser. Okay, I'll go ahead and beautify some of this area up a little bit. But there we go. So between a couple new exhibits off in this direction and another one over here and some little animals and making sure our finances are mostly in order, things are growing pretty nicely. You gotta admit, this is actually looking like a pretty decent zoo. But of course, all things must come to an end, and I do think that we have maybe one more video in us for this very short series of Planet Zoo. So thank you all very much for watching and your continued support. I do hope you enjoyed. If so, then I would ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time.